Did you know that you can stream the best of HBO shows and more with the new Astro? Better than before, no rain interruptions, no repeats. Just stream anytime and on demand via the Astro Ultra Box. It starts from only RM5990 a month, and you can find out more information at astro.com.my. You're listening to the Goggler Podcast, Bahir and Uba with you, and today we will be talking about Prime Video's first Malaysian original. It's called That Cover Girl, and it tells the story of Siti Saleha's Sophie, who is a modest fashion designer who makes her mark on Paris Fashion Week only to have her life upended by a scandal. Now, when I say first Malaysian original, I don't mean that this is a show that's just going to premiere in Malaysia and Indonesia and maybe Southeast Asia. No, no, no. This thing is being pushed out to over 240 territories worldwide starting this Thursday, 19th October. That is huge. That is massive. So what do we think of the show? Now, at the time of this recording, we have only seen one of the six episodes. And I think my review, in a word, is intriguing. My review, in a word, would be promising. Yes. You know, intriguing and promising, I think, are two very good words for this show. I think the concept behind the show is quite interesting. In that, it is a show that is centered around a... I don't want to use the word strong woman because that seems like a catch-all phrase these days. I think it's a show that's centered around a very complex woman. And those are characters that we don't necessarily get a lot of on Malaysian screens. God knows even if we do, they end up being very sanitized versions of that idea. Sanitized is one, but it also is the laziest version of the description of a strong female lead, right? It's she's she's either a boss or she stands up for what she believes in. She's uh, actually physically strong. You know, there's no complexity to the character. There's no depth to the character when they use the term strong female lead. And I think that's what that cover girl does best. Yeah. In crafting this character, we have Sophie who isn't just a boss, but she is complex she is complicated she is struggling with a fledgling marriage she is dealing with trying to be the most progressive version of herself and yet fighting all of these external forces that are hell-bent on bringing her down she is dealing with a potential love affair these are all real character aspects that I think people can relate to and that we see a lot of in the content that we get out of Hollywood and the UK and anything that's non-Malaysian. But for the most part, Malaysian writers and directors and filmmakers don't really want to go there. I don't know if they don't want to go there or they aren't allowed to go there or they think they're not going to be allowed to go there. I think those are very different things. I think it's the third option. I think a lot of the time, They think they're not allowed to go there and they don't want to take the risk. Yes. And so therefore they keep playing it safe. The one thing we can tell you about that cover girl, at least until we've seen the remaining five episodes, is that this is a show that doesn't play it safe. It doesn't play it safe so much so that us as Malaysian entertainment reviewers, we're watching it going, oh, there's going to be trouble coming from this. And I think that's bad. I think the trouble that comes from it is not called for. I think the trouble that this show will get will be invalid because they're not talking about content. They're talking about one particular scene or they're talking about one particular little bit. And that's just the stupidest thing to have a problem with. But I think that's the thing that's really lacking from Malaysian fiction, right? Yeah. Even the finest Malaysian movies are always skirting that line of not truly reflecting reality. Mm. And the best fiction, if we hope that it can speak to something, anything, I'm not asking it to be some metaphor for society. I'm just asking for it to at least represent who we are as a people. And to begin to do that, we need to start reflecting reality. These restrictions that are placed upon our creative endeavors 
in the Malaysian sphere, where if you're making a movie or if you're making a TV show, you cannot depict the PDRM as being bad, or you cannot depict people with titles as being bad. They cannot be corrupt, for example. Let's not even go that far. And I don't know if this still holds true. I think it doesn't. But there was a time in recent memory, potentially maybe even up to maybe 10, 15 years ago, where you cannot wear denim on RTM TV shows because only bad people wear denim. Yes, I think that was like this unwritten code, right? It was unwritten. Or was it actually written? It was unwritten, but absolutely enforced. So that's how, I'm trying to find a good word, but there aren't any, that's how fucked up RTM can be. Like, oh, you cannot wear denim. You can't wear jeans because good people don't wear jeans. The good characters must all wear shirts and slacks because that's what good people do. And the bad people wear jeans and torn t-shirts. I'm just like, that's absolute dog shit, right? Yeah. And I think that's the problem, right? I think the general public don't don't even understand the minutia of the ridiculousness that can come into play when you're trying to make a TV show. So now let's not even talk about what kind of topics are allowed to be discussed. We can't even get past the fact that because you're wearing a t-shirt, you are not necessarily a drug addict. And that cover girl breaks all of those barriers down. I mean, in this show, we have women smoking. We have illicit love affairs. We have rich Malay datoks indulging in a little bit of whiskey, which yeah. I love to see on TV because God knows great. we see it in real life all the time. Yeah. I think it's important to note that the show doesn't make a meal of it. Mm. And that's where I give kudos to the filmmakers. They are pushing the envelope, but they don't make a big deal out of it. It's all rooted in character and situation. Yeah. And so therefore, what happens on screen is more believable than anything else we may have seen coming out of the Malaysian creative sphere, especially with regards to stories like this. Yes. There were a couple of moments watching this that I gasped in the first episode, <laughs> if only because yeah. I didn't expect to see it in a Malaysian TV show, let alone one that was partially funded by FINAS and approved by LPF. I think that's amazing. Yeah. And so all of these things are taking place. And I'm hoping that what this does is actually embolden other creatives and filmmakers to push the envelope a little more, to show them that, hey, it can be done. It can be done tastefully. It can be done by telling a story that actually is worth watching. Mm. And that maybe you should try it too and not just regurgitate the same shit over and over again. This is selfish of me, but I'm actually hoping for blowback for that cover. I'm hoping for a small blowback. I'm hoping for blowback, right? And I'm hoping that everybody then stands up for the show. I'm hoping that, that some idiots on Twitter will be like, hey, what is this? We can't show these things happening. This, you know, And then LPF go, no, we can. And then Finas come out and say, no, we can. And then Amazon Prime say, no, we can. I hope they don't give in to the bigots. I hope the bigots make noise and then get shut down by the powers that be. I think it needs that. We, as a culture, as a society, as a content-consuming public, need to see that we will not stand down from idiocy and stupidity. I have a lot less faith in the powers that be. I do too. <laughs> I don't think we have a ministry. I don't think we have an LPF who have the guts to actually come out and say that and said, you know what? Yeah. We stand by our decision. Yeah. We are the experts. We are the professionals. We made a call and we stand by it. You have absolutely no idea what the hell you're talking about. I think that's important because God knows there are donkeys on Twitter who are just sitting there trolls with no other work than to do this, right? And we should not succumb to that kind of pressure. I don't even need LPF to respond. I think if LPF and Finas let this burn itself out, I think it's okay. I don't think LPF needs to come out and respond with regards to an artistic decision that a filmmaker has made. You may not like it, you may have basic boundaries with regards to nudity and, and violence and all that. That's fine. I think as a growing culture, we all need that. But at the same time, you cannot and shouldn't have to respond to every idiot on Twitter who has a thought cross his brain. Half a thought. I think that's important. I mean, it's a full thought, lah, but it's not a full thought that's worth of any value. Lah. It's true. It may be a full thought, but it's not a good thought. 
it's not a good thought. It's a thought that you needed to keep to yourself. I'm sure I've said this before on other stuff, but this feels like a like a step in the right direction. Okay, I'm going to draw a weird parallel here and I hope everybody keeps up. That cover girl is a step in the right direction the way Pulau wanted to be a step in the right direction. Pulau wanted to be a Malaysian slasher movie with sex and violence, but didn't quite do it well enough. I think that cover girl avoids gratuitous sexual elements while still having a sexual storyline and is doing it tastefully. I think that's the difference. I think the show's themes of arguing about what is actually modesty and what modesty in fashion means and what fashion even means in the Islamic sphere. Those are conversations worth having. I feel like this show is absolutely a step in the right direction with all of the themes and things they want to argue and say. Now, all of that may be purely coincidental as the disclaimer says, but if you've lived in Malaysia for any period of time, you know where the inspirations come from. There are enough of hijabi influences in Malaysia who have also gotten this kind of flack on social media, the same kind of flack that Sophie gets. We know a lot of them. We've seen how they've responded to it. And it's very clear that the TV series has kind of pulled from reality in that sense. Some of the other good things about the show that I really enjoyed was the use of language. I mean, this is a very Roja show. People speak BM and English interchangeably. They speak like how we speak. Yeah. In that we don't necessarily use any one language strictly. Yeah. And I think that's also something that we don't necessarily see a lot of on Malaysian TV or in Malaysian movies. So I quite enjoyed that as well. The first episode, there was a lot of scenes that were actually shot in Paris because they actually went to Paris to shoot the stuff for Paris Fashion Week. And I expect no less from a Prime Video funded production. I don't want to see some green screen stand-in for Paris. I think that elevates the show and makes it feel a lot more expensive, which is also a very good thing. I do have a couple of nitpicks, and unfortunately, these nitpicks are the same nitpicks that I have with almost every other Malaysian show. I still feel that some of the dialogue and some of the banter can come off as a little kaku. Mm. Maybe it gets better in the coming episodes. But for me, some of that still feels a little stilted. Even in it being stilted, that is more of a delivery thing as opposed to a writing thing? Yes. So the delivery thing ends up feeling at times like drama Melayu. When this thing is trying to be anything but drama Melayu. I'm not blaming the actors. I think the actors were fantastic. But I blame it on just their experience, right? They've probably done too many of these really bad Malay dramas that it sort of seeps into their bones and their performance, which is unfortunate. But for the most part, I think it doesn't f- generally feel like a Malay drama. It feels it feels like an elevated Malay drama. You can still tell it's a Malaysian show, but you feel different watching it, I think. It feels better. It feels stronger. I think the central performances help in that sense. So Siti Saleha, Hisham Hamid, Alicia Amin, and Ayman Hakim are all very good and have chemistry, good chemistry with one another. For me, the drama Malayu stuff kicks in with some of the supporting cast. Their moments feel a little hammy at times because they slip back into those overacting, over-emoting moments. Yep, agree. And I think that's stuff that we can do without, but, but they're all nitpicks. I think for the most part, I had an enjoyable time watching the show, watching the first episode, and it made me want to go back and watch the remaining five. I want to know how this plays out, and I want to know what happens to these characters. That's a weird place to be for me. (laughs) Because most of the time, we just don't give a shit about any of the characters on local dramas because they're written so badly. The story arcs don't pull me in. I don't care about watching this girl trying to figure out if she wants guy A or guy B for the millionth time. We've seen that. It's been done so much better before. I don't need to watch it again in 2023. Find something else, right? And this show has found something else. There's a tweak in the stories. There's a tweak in the relationships. And I think those tweaks do enough to make me want to come back and find out. 
That said, I will say the first episode feels a little chaotic because they're trying to do a lot. Mm. That was my second nitpick with the show. With regards to the first episode trying to do so much that it comes off as a bit messy because you're trying to establish these relationships. And I get you only have six episodes to do this, but there's very little time to breathe. And Mm. so you're trying to establish these relationships. You're trying to do the whole Paris thing. You're cutting back to KL. You're introducing parents and best friends and co-workers. And I think the editing is all right. I think the editors do a good job in keeping the audience invested and involved. But after watching that first episode, I really thought to myself, I need to see the remaining five to see how all of this gets threaded together. I will say the flashbacks were done well in that flashbacks can be used as a shitty device as a shitty exposition device and this doesn't do it that way which i really appreciate it the mvp of the show is definitely siti saleh i think she does a really good job i think she anchors the show really really well and she's a very watchable presence on screen and that really helped in getting me invested and involved in this story yeah she manages all of these things juggles all of these balls really really well I'm definitely watching the show for her. She's my anchor point. As she should be. I mean, she's the lead of the show, but I think she doesn't take that responsibility lightly. She absolutely carries the show and she realizes the responsibility of her character being the lead for this show. You said the word juggle earlier, and I think that was what something I found quite refreshing about Siti Saleha's performance in that you can see in her eyes that she's juggling all these balls, that the character is juggling all these things, right? She's juggling a secret. She's juggling a marriage that is not on the rocks, but potentially heading for dangerous waters. She's juggling the potential future of a business. She's juggling trying to keep her business partner at arm's length because of things she doesn't want the business partner to know about. She's juggling being this strong hijabi businesswoman while talking to the Middle Eastern guys, you know. So she's juggling all these things. And you can see it in her eyes in that there are moments where the director lets her drop her guard a little bit. When Siti Saleha's character turns away from the business partner turns away from talking to other people, her eyes sort of falter a little bit because she's tired. I thought that that was really strong, good performance from her. We think you should check out that cover girl. It's on Prime Video. There are only six episodes. All of them drop at once, so you don't have to wait week on week, which I think is a smart decision, especially with a show like this. You want to give it to people so they can enjoy it all and then tell their friends about it. Let us know what you think about the series Apparently, there are some more shocking things to come from episodes two through six. So I'm I'm ready to gasp some more. Yeah, I, I can't believe you actually gasped out loud. I'm telling you, when you reach the last second of that first episode, you will gasp. I don't gasp when I see it on Netflix on some white person show. That's fine. I know you've already done the exit of the episode, but I, I think that final bits of the of the pilot episode of that cover girl the reason you gasped i think is because the setup was so good yes to get to that point like i knew it was coming yes i knew it was coming but i didn't know if they were going to make this character that flawed because we just don't see it on local productions not only just flawed but then to show it to us Exactly. I've seen shows where the character is said to be flawed, but it happens off camera. This happens on motherfucking camera. Not only off camera, we are told the character is flawed as opposed to shown the character is flawed. That build up to that moment. And I also just want to do a quick shout out to director Magat Sharizal because that moment was shot really fucking well. Agreed. And I think it's not just what happens. I think it's not just a build up to how it happened but I think the way what happened was shot just ooh I get goosebumps I'm getting goosebumps right now check out that cover girl it drops on Prime Video 19th October all six episodes let us know what you think once you've seen it you know how to reach out gogglermy all of our social media feeds you can also email us on podcast at goggler.my or send us whatsapp on the goggler hotline 012 524 520 
8. Drop us a line on any one of those channels and we'll send you a link to join our brand new Discord server where you can chat with us in real time. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Goggler Podcast.